Hi everyone. Um, this is a portfolio review of a portfolio that was accepted to the Architectural Association um, and then sort of became edited and changed and was accepted to the Bartlett, Cornell, SciArc, Edinburgh and Glasgow School of Art. And I thought I'd go through it with you so you can understand what a successful portfolio can look like. This is just one of many versions. And this is not my portfolio. Um, this is a student of mine who uh, worked with us at Architecture Prep, and we helped him develop his work um, so that he could get into the top schools of his choice. Um, and there's lots of free information on how to go about doing that on our website uh, with a link in the description. So this portfolio is about 20 pages long, and it was uh, it was done in A4 format and printed and then sent off to the Architectural Association. And it was obviously used for other universities as well, which is how um, the student managed to get into all sorts of different places. So this is a portfolio that was submitted to the Architectural Association before um, the, the student went to interview with a more uh, developed portfolio. So what I mean by that is you could think of this as a sort of sample of a larger, perhaps A1 scale, A2 scale portfolio that was brought to interview with original work and um, a few more pieces of development. But this is a good guide for now. So essentially on the left, we have a pro pro project um, uh, uh, sorry, a portfolio introduction. And then on the right, we have just a table of contents and it's about 20 pages. And 20 pages is about the kind of scale of what they ask for. So before I go into projects, I'll just describe what a portfolio should sort of look like. It should be simple and easily digestible. So you wanna kind of keep information in the same kind of place for each start uh, of each project. So that way the person flipping through it can understand exactly where they need to look to understand the project description and the project description shouldn't be long at all. So there are four or five projects in this portfolio and each one deals with a, a particular theme and that theme was um, to do with escapism. And we tried to develop escapism in both his personal statement and his portfolio so that the two could talk to each other and the and this applicant became known for becoming the guy who was all about escapism because admissions tutors go through hundreds of portfolios per season so they're going to need to be able to understand very directly who each applicant is and why they're worth rem remembering. And it sounds kind of harsh, but um, it's just simply a matter of the scale of the amount of applicants who apply to schools. You, you have to just try and consolidate your identity into the person that is specifically about something um, without sort of constraining your work. So the first project was about um, just general warming up into this idea of um, letting your mind go loose and abstract expressionism. And then we go into this project, which is about um, collaging sketches made uh, that, that deal with sort of fantastical lands from a kind of semi dream world and um, making, making sure that the subject is as spatial as possible because otherwise um, it's perhaps not so relevant for architecture. So by spatial, I mean, we're dealing with very three-dimensional objects and scenes and subjects. Um, and then we sort of go into a more propositional project where little moments in the previous project were sort of, um, were sort of vignetted and, and understood as singular instances. And uh, those particular instances then kind of formed a composite of a space that was then developed in 2D and 3D um, in, in these images. And uh, these, these, were all, these were all independent 
projects, um, but they went off of a lot of this particular applicant's A-level work. Um, and including independent work like this is really important, but this could could just as well be um, A level or uh, or equivalent work, high school work. And then uh, in this particular project, we're dealing with a Piranesi drawing, and this was more of a technical exercise into um, the sort of conception of architectural space without it becoming a sort of necessarily professionally architectural project. Um, so the reason for that is because uh, admissions tutors aren't really interested in seeing what you think of the kind of way you should be designing in, in the sort of professional world, because they want to be able to know that you're teachable and malleable and that you're able to learn and um, come, to, come to the school with a certain sense of naivety, which can allow you to grow creatively. Um, so here we've got basically a, a simple exercise where a, a A4 was placed on an A2 or A1 piece of paper. And um, yes, on an A1 sheet. And um, the A4 was an original, was a, you know, a Piranesi uh, print. And um, the sort of proposal grew out of that print and then the print was taken away and the proposal grow, grew into it. So you sort of start with a space and then you end up with a completely different space. And it's basically an exercise in imagination and drawing skill. Um, it's kind of thematic of the project. It's kind of to do with sort of fantastical dreamscapes, um, but it's also, it's also only loosely attached to that. And in fact, it's actually, um, more of a sort of exercise in, in skill, which is perfectly fine to include. And notice um, on the top left where the description is, it's clear that this is a new project because we're starting a double spread with the project description in the same place and some information about the sort of size of the, of the work. Um, and then this is directly sort of A-level stuff. The student was um, felt like they wanted to, uh, that they should include more sort of technical mastery of two-dimensional representation, so turning 3D stuff into 2D, which is a huge part of architecture, and that's why it's important to include life drawing. But I wouldn't include more than a spread on this kind of stuff, no more than this kind of amount of work, because it's it just goes to show your skill as opposed to how it kind of roots in your personal narrative. Um, and another A-level project here, um, which was important to include because it was a further mastery of the sort of 3D to the 2D translation. And in, and it kind of has a sense of being reminiscent of the dreamscape complexities from the previous projects. And uh, that that's enough for it to be tied to a sort of theme of um, sort of escaping the figurative. Uh, so on this final spread of pages, we have um, a wrap up of the previous project, which was, a little, which was a little bit of an extension on the 3D to 2D work and sort of a bit of uh, photography um, in, that, in that realm. And really specifically looking at the kind of land, landscapes associated with macro photography and how they translate out to larger sort of more sculptural um, pieces of work, pieces of three-dimensional work. So we're still dealing with kind of three-dimensional and two-dimensional translations, and all of it is reminiscent of those kind of dense and complex spatial realms from the kind of escapist work um, that was more figuratively portrayed in, in earlier projects. And then on the right, um, we, are, we put this on the right-hand side to show that it's not exactly uh, integral information to the portfolio. This is more like um, things that the applicant wanted to show that they've done as opposed to it being, you know, a, a central part of the portfolio. So a wrap up of some work experience and some work developed during that time. And on the bottom right, some work developed at um, a summer school that the 
that the student took um, a year or so before they submitted this application. Neither of these things on the right are necessary to put in. It's just if you have them, it's fine. Um, there's definitely no bias. Um, there's, there really isn't any bias uh, if you have or haven't done these things because a lot of people aren't um, able to access uh, these kind of programs. These projects are more for the student than they are for the application. They just allow the student to um, understand if this is something that they want to go and do. And then once they've gone, gone through those phases, they have applied and it's clear that they're interested in pursuing th this sort of this sort of work. So, um, you know, you don't have to put stuff like this in a portfolio. It can stay in your CV or your um, other application materials. Uh, it's just if you have it, it's worth putting in. And the portfolio itself, we're sort of dealing with half independent work, half school work. And uh, that's a, you know, a fairly good mix to put in. So if you have any questions about this work um, or anything else related to architecture admissions, do send architecture prep an email um, or sign up for a free consultation or whatever you need. We can help you get the best that you can get out of your application. Um, and we're always, you know, available to give advice, uh, regardless of, um, whether or not you sign up for a course or, or what have you. So, uh, best of luck with your application and keep in mind, keep it thematic, um, deal with space, um, deal with 3D and 2D and make the work nice and rich, but make the presentation nice and simple and you'll do fine.